Hello everyone, today we'll learn how to use the trade window, which is where we can set up our trading orders. To open it, we need to click on this icon on the depth and sales. Within the trade window, we can choose the account, the number of contracts, the order type, the order management, the trading strategies, and also close the position and cancel the orders. Let's now go through each section and button in detail. We'll start from the right side. The button with an X will close the trade window. We can open it again by clicking on the Death and Sales icon as we did before. The button with a T will switch between a horizontal and a vertical layout. The button with an A will switch between always on top, which means the trade window will stay visible even if we put another window over it. Or normal mode, which means the trade window will go behind another window if we put it over it. Looking now at the left side of the trade window, we have a drop-down list that shows all of our connected accounts. For example, here we can see five SIM accounts that we created in our Journalytics platform and one CQG demo account. To trade with a specific account, we need to select it from the list Let's choose one from the Journalytics SIM accounts. Let's buy one contract at the market and we have now opened a long position at 78.75. We can also switch to another account. Let's select the CQG demo one and open another position. This way we can manage multiple positions on different accounts using the same debt and sales. However, this is not recommended because it can be confusing and risky. You might forget about an open position on another account or trade on a live account by mistake. You should always confirm your positions in the positions window and your broker's platform if possible. But the best practice is to have one depth and sales for each account and symbol that you are trading. One more thing to note about the account dropdown list. To see the Journalytics SIM accounts in the list, we need to connect DayTrader to the Journalytics servers first. For this, we need to go to File and select Options. Here, we will add our Jigsaw credentials. After Restart DayTrader, our SIM accounts will be visible. Again, always make sure the correct account is selected. And if after restarting DayTrader, no SIM accounts are available, well, maybe no accounts have been created yet. So let's quickly look at how to create them. Click on the Journalytics button in the Jigsaw main window. Journalytics platform will open. Scroll down to Tools and select Simulator account. Here we can see all the accounts you already have created. And to create a new account, just click Create. Set an account name, a description if you want, the currency, the balance you want to have available, and if you want your trades to be shared in the leaderboard, you need to check this option also. Then click Create and the account is created. We already have five, so don't need another one, so we'll click Cancel. As said before, at the restarting day trader, the new SIM accounts will be available for trading. Next, we have the buttons that let us choose the number of contracts we want to trade. We have the default numbers, 1, 3, 5, 50, and 100 lots. Down here, we can see the selected number of contracts we are going to buy or sell. And something cool we can do here is customize the buttons. So by right-clicking on them, we can choose a different number of contracts to trade. For example, let's change this one to 2 lots, this one to 4, this one to 6, and this one to 10 lots. If we now click on the 2 lot button, we will be ready to trade 2 lots. We can also enter any number we want by double clicking on it. For example, let's enter 15. Let's open a position, and here we can see the total number of contracts we have currently open. We are short 15 lots. And here's something else we can do. As we just said, we are short 15 lots. And let's add to the position. 
we click on the two lot button and let's sell another two lots at the market. We are now short a total of 17 lots and we decided to close the position entirely for whatever reason. We can either double click and write 17 or uh, let's go back to two. We can simply click on the number of contracts for our current position. It will automatically set the order quantity to that amount and we are ready to close it. And since we are discussing orders and quantity, let's look at the TIFF option here, which stands for time in force. This option let us choose how long our orders will stay in the market. The default option is day, which means that orders that we might have in the market at the end of the trading day will be cancelled by the exchange. If we want orders to last longer than one day, then we need to select the GTC option, which stands for good till cancelled. This option means that our orders will stay in the market until we cancel them or they get filled. Depending on our trading style or if our account supports the amount of margin needed overnight, we should pay attention to which timing force option we are using. Let's now look at the order type section. The auto option is on by default. This option will automatically select the right order based on where we click on the depth and sales. Let's see an example. If we click on the bid column below the current price, it will place a limit order to buy. And if we click above the current price, it will place a stop order to buy. The opposite will happen in the ask column. If we click above the current price, it will place a limit order to sell. And if we click below the current price, it will place a stop order to sell. We can also choose the stop and stop limit options at the top to place our stop and limit orders. But here we'll need to place them at the correct price on the depth and sales. Another order type we can use is the stop limit order, which we need to enable. We can set an offset for it, let's say three ticks. A stop limit is a stop order that converts to a limit order when hit. The offset is the number of ticks from the stop order that we want the limit order to be. It's actually common practice to put a limit order above price to get out at the best price without slippage. So it can only be placed above the current price to buy or below the current price to sell. If we place it above the current price to sell or below the current price to buy, we will get an error message. The next order type we can use is the volume stop order. Let's say we want this order to be triggered when the depth goes to 20 lots or below. And let's enable the stop order option first. As the name indicates, a volume stop order is a, well, stop order. So like the others we saw previously, it can only be placed above the current price to buy or below the current price to sell. If we place it above the current price to sell or below the current price to buy, we will get an error message. Now let's enable the auto order option again. Let's place our volume stop order above the current price to buy, but now when we place an order below the current price, we are placing a limit order because the auto option knows where we are clicking and so placing the correct type of order. We then have the trail order type, which is not actually an order type, but a property we can set to any order, such as limit, stop, stop limit and volume stop orders. It makes the order follow the best bid or best offer price. Let's turn it on. You can see it becomes yellow and let's set it up to eight ticks. Let's place a buy stop order far above the market and we can see how it automatically moves to eight ticks above the best offer price. As the price keeps going down, our order goes down with it. If the price reverses and go up, the order will stop moving and stay at the last price it reached until it gets filled or we cancel it. Let's now cancel this order and place a sell limit order instead, 
also far above the market just to show you how it adjusts to the 8 tick distance we set above the best offer price. As said before, as prices keep going down, our limit order follows it. Let's now select a stop limit order and cancel this order so it does not get too confusing by having too many orders on the depth and sales. We place it far above the market and it adjusts automatically. As the price moves down, it follows it. Finally, let's use a volume stop order. Let's go back to auto and set the volume order to 20 lots. Let's cancel the stop limit and place our volume stop order. Like the others, it follows the price as it goes down and if prices reverse and go up, the order will stay where it is until it gets filled or we cancel it. Let's also look at the OCO order type, which stands for one cancels the other. We start by opening a position. We then turn on the OCO button and this type of order consists of two separate orders that are linked together. Since we have a long position, we will use the OCO to set a profit target and a stop loss. Let's first click on the price we want as our stop loss. You won't see any order on the depth and sales yet, so don't worry, it's perfectly normal. Let's now click on the price we want as our profit target. As we do that, the stop loss order will become visible. The OCO order type means that if one order is filled or cancelled, the other one will be cancelled too. So if we cancel our stop loss ourselves, our profit target will be cancelled too. Or if the market fills our profit target, our stop loss will be cancelled automatically. These two buttons are for opening a position at the market. The blue one will buy at the market and the red one will sell at the market as we've seen in this video. However, be careful when using these buttons, especially in fast moving markets. When you send a market order, it will be filled at the next available price, which might be very different from what you expected. For example, if your price jumps 20 ticks between the time you click the button and the time the order reaches the exchange, you might end up buying or selling 20 ticks worse than you wanted. So always check the market conditions before placing market orders. The two buttons below are for placing limit orders at the inside market. This means that when we click on the ask button, we are placing a limit order to buy at the ask price. And when we click on the bid button, we are placing a limit order to sell at the bid price. We might not notice much difference between these two buttons and the ones above because the orders are often filled right away. That is because we are placing them at the prices where most of the trading is happening, the inside market. But if we look at the orders window, we can see that they are in fact limit orders. Now let's see how the S2P and L2P buttons work. These buttons stand for stop to price and limit to price. They allow us to move all of our orders to the same price with one single click. Let's see an example. Let's open a position with four lots. Now let's change our order quantity to one lot and place a couple of limit orders up here and a couple of stop orders down here. As the price moves up and down, we might want to adjust the orders manually, but after some time, we might decide to move all of them to one price. Instead of moving them one by one, which can be slow and tedious, we can use the S2P and L2P buttons. Let's turn on the L2P button and then click on the price where we want to move all of our limit orders. Let's click on 81.50 we can see that they all move to that price. Let's do the same for the stop orders. Let's turn on the S2P button and let's move all four orders to 79 even. We can also choose a strategy from the drop-down list below. We just need to pick the strategy we want 
and the number of contracts will automatically match what we have set in our strategy. Then we can open our position and the strategy will take care of placing all the orders for us. If we want to close our position, we can click on the flat button. This will not only close our position, but also cancel all pending orders we have. And let's extend a bit over the flat button and how it works. Most markets don't support flat, so when we click flat, we cancel any orders outstanding and then send a market order to close the position. But sometimes we get no response from the broker. And when that happens, the flat button becomes gray, meaning that it has been disabled so we don't keep clicking on it, which might reverse our position. We should see an error if we try to click on the flat button when it is gray. In this situation, especially when the market is moving fast, we should close our position on our broker's platform or call them directly if we don't have access to it. And finally, we have the cancel button, which does exactly what it says. When we click on it, it will cancel any pending orders we have without affecting our position. Let's now take a look at the shortcut keys that you can set specifically related to the trade window buttons. For that, we need to go to the depth and sales settings and click on the shortcut keys tab. We can set a shortcut key for buy market, cancel, flat, hit bid, hell to P, lift offer, OCO, quantity, S to P, sell market, and trail. Let's now set a shortcut key to buy the market. We click on the buy market button option and then click change. And let's set it to control B. Click OK. Let's now click on the flat button option. Click change. And let's set it to control F. Click OK. So with the trade window or the depth and sales active, let's buy at the market by clicking on control B and then let's flat or close the position by clicking on control F. Before we go, let's just take a quick look at the trading symbols shown on the trade window and on the depth and sales. As we can see on the depth and sales header, we have the ES September mini contract. And on the trade window, we can see also the same contract. But let's now open the search symbol window and enable the cross instrument option. We will be crossing with the ES micro contract. Now we can see some changes. On the trade window, we now see the ES September micro contract. And on the depth and sales header, we have two symbols. The first symbol indicates the trading symbol. So if we place an order, we are placing it in the ES micro contract, not in the ES mini contract. Whereas the data we see on the depth and sales is from the ES mini contract, which is the second symbol in parentheses. So the volume profile, the depth and sales, the current trades, all this data is coming from the ES mini contract. In summary, the trade window is your control center where you can set everything needed to open, manage and close your positions. If you have liked this video, leave a thumbs up, click on the bell to be notified when a new video is uploaded, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.